Slide her out, just like I did the other one. That one came out a lot easier. Ooh, ooh. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, we might have some damage. Hey guys, Matt here at M2 Lumber, and I've got this awesome six by 12 CNC machine by Avid CNC. It's got the six horsepower motor on it. We use this to flatten hundreds of slabs every single year in our projects that we're doing and for customers as well. And I've had this for about two years now, and I pushed it to the point to where it was finally starting to have some major mechanical issues. Um, I was losing steps, or at least what appeared to be losing steps and having issues with my, my Y-axis motion. And after being on the phone with technical support from Avid, we narrowed it down to a couple different things that we could try. I've already replaced the drive gears and that didn't seem to improve the problem. So then they suggested I change out the linear bearings. Now, I have my doubts that the linear bearings were bad because I couldn't feel anything. Well, I learned that I was completely wrong about that. <laughs> As you'll see watching this video, I had one of my bearings completely exploded and I didn't even know it, or at least I couldn't tell by the way it sounded with all of the components attached and with the weight of the gantry on it. But once you take it apart, it's extremely obvious and noticeable. Now I put this off for a while because I was really nervous about doing this because the linear bearings are actually what hold the entire gantry in its uh, vertical position. So if you took them all off at the same time, it would just... So that's not recommended to do that. So I developed a process where I basically take them off one at a time and rotate around. I'm guessing that's probably standard throughout industry, but this is my first time ever doing something like this on this type of machine. So I'll show you my process and what I used, and I think it worked out pretty well. So let's jump right into it. Um, one of the things that you have to do, which kind of sucks, is disassemble this entire drive mechanism. So I have to you know, disconnect the motor, take the motor uh, bracket itself off and everything. So that whole thing has to come off so I can get to where the bearings are and take them apart. Okay, so now that the drive motors are off on either side, basically the whole gantry system is completely free and I can slide it by hand back and forth. Now I have to admit, I don't know what bad bearings sound like or feel like, but these don't really feel that rough and they don't feel like they're skipping at all. So I don't know, I'm having my doubts whether or not this is actually gonna fix my problem, but I'm already this far into it, so I'm gonna go ahead and do it but I want you guys to listen to see if you think it sounds like they're bad because to me, they sound pretty good. So this is purely for documentation standpoint. Okay, so what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna go get a jack and barely put a little bit of pressure on the underside of the gantry over here to help support this side while I disassemble the bearings on the left side of the gantry and remove them one at a time. And I'll have to slide them out and hopefully there's no motion in the Z-axis because when I take one out, it could potentially want to rock or come down some. Okay, so if you get the bearing replacement kit from Avid, this is what it looks like. A bunch of little green boxes. They come plastic wrap, and this is the bearing block. Now, this little piece right here is really important. That's a plastic slider piece that you don't wanna take off until you go to install it. I'll show you that in a second, because if you pull that off, all the bearings that are inside there could potentially fall out. So we don't wanna take that off just yet. There's a special way that you put this on and take that off so that you don't have a giant mess on your hands. So here's my bearing. Um, they do provide the grease fittings separately. I don't know why. So you have to install these into the side, which goes right there. Do make sure that when you install this, you have the grease fitting facing out um, because you could have it facing inward to where you couldn't access it and then that would be really bad. Don't ask me how I know that. <clears throat> so let's go ahead and take the other one off and we'll get this one put on. I don't feel a whole lot of tension or pressure on these screws, so that's a good sign. If you do feel tension or pressure on these screws when you're pulling them out, that could mean that maybe you don't have it braced very well. So I wouldn't, I would be very cautious if you did notice that. Okay, so now I'm gonna try to 
ease this thing out of here. I don't know how easily it will come out. Oh, okay. Well, there we go. Come on. Come on. Okay. All right. Boom. Look at that. Wow. A lot of buildup on the, on the inside there. All righty. And now, of course, I have to take this outer plate off <laughs> so that I can slide the bearing off because it's going to hit right there. Again, it still really doesn't feel that bad. I don't really know what I'm comparing it to, but overall, I don't know. I give it an 8 out of 10. Kind of completely made up values that I'm assigning to it, but I don't know what else to say. Of all the Y-axis bearings that I've changed, this is one of them. Actually, it's the only one. Now I can slide this bad boy off of here. Lots of dirt. Okay, I haven't touched this or cleaned this at all, so we can do a fair side-by-side -side comparison. Now, I haven't taken this plastic piece out yet, so you can't see those bearings. But there's really, there's no bearings, from what I can tell, missing inside there. It's very hard to see um, at that angle, but all of the bearings are inside on both sides. There is quite a lot of buildup of debris here, but, I, you know, again, I don't really know what to expect for something as, this thing's been in use for almost two years, um, so I would expect to have some level of buildup. So, I, I don't know. Um, Again, no bearings seem to be missing. They roll easily. There's a good bit of buildup here in the back. That is really packed in there tight. Um, don't know. Still having more doubts. But we will see. So I'm going to go ahead and clean off the back side uh, on the where it bolts up to it to make sure all this area is clean. And then I'm gonna go ahead and slide that one on there and install it too. All right guys, I went ahead and also took off the plastic cover, um, which is supposed to help sort of shield the uh, linear guide right here. And I did that so that I could access the top portion here of where the bearing bolts on so I could clean all this off back behind here. It really wasn't that dirty, uh, but went ahead and made sure it's nice and clean. So now we can go ahead and slide the new one on. As I slide this on here, it's going to push the plastic out of the way, like so, and boom, there we go. Now, again, I don't know if that's tighter or looser or what, but I don't really have much to compare it to. All right, so let me slide this back behind here, gently. Ow, there we go. It's a little bit of a tight fit. Everything looks like it's lined up still, exactly the way that it was. Thank God. Now, I'll just put my screws back in. Hmm. Tighten the bottom, and I'm going to tighten the top, doing opposite corners. Don't know if it matters or not, but better safe than sorry. And there we go. One down, one to go on the other side. Okay, slide her out just like I did the other one. That one came out a lot easier. Ooh, ooh. Ladies and gentlemen, we might have some damage. Okay, boys and girls, I think we have a contender. Um, immediately, yes, I can see immediately the whole back end of this thing is blown apart. Um, it actually slides a lot easier, but that's probably because it's missing a lot of bearings. Um, I can see one ball bearing down inside there, and I bet it's missing many, many more. This thing is obliterated, so very interesting. Really happy about this. I know that seems stupid or weird, but at least I think I found what the problem is. This thing is absolutely, listen to that. You can hear it hitting and clicking. This thing is absolutely 
awful. Absolutely awful. Um, and I'm glad that, I, that it's like this because I'm really hoping this is the root cause for all the issues that I've been having. Um, so I'm very excited to see that. I'm gonna get this piece of crap off of here and put the new one on and hopefully everything's gonna be fantastic. Okay, well, do I feel stupid. Um, this is the front bearing, which again, I couldn't see anything wrong with it. And here's the rear bearing. I don't know if you guys can see anything wrong with that. But, um, well, for starters, this thing exploded up here. There's a bearing coming out the top there. Pretty sure that's not supposed to happen. Um, the rear end over here just completely blew out and there's just ball bearings falling out everywhere. So, yeah, I think it's safe to say this one was ready to be changed. I don't know. It's definitely past its prime. so I got this side done I've taken the jack out and I can't notice still a huge difference in the feel but I think a lot of that has to do once you put all this mass on it of course the little imperfections in the bearings aren't going to be very noticeable but uh, it feels fine I don't think it moved on me at all because everything was held up pretty well the bolt holes went lined up perfectly and screwed right back on so I'm going to repeat this process now for the other side jack it up over there closer to where the spindle is and then change out that side as well. Okay, so I, I guess you could say it, it does feel a little bit smoother. It's really difficult to tell still. Again, once you put all this mass on here, you don't feel any of the little vibrations and stuff like that. And if I didn't know they were new bearings, I don't know that I could pick it out in a lineup. So only time will tell. Um, now I just need to reassemble the motors. That's just a reverse of what we saw earlier and then home out the machine. I'll jog it back and forth real quick and make sure I don't have any issues. And then I'll start cutting some patterns to make sure my Z axis is still trammed in and nothing has moved. And I guess, yeah, time will tell if this actually fixed my problem. I did have one bearing that was completely blown out, which you saw, and I didn't notice that until I went and took it apart for $40 a piece. This is definitely something that I'm probably gonna do every year now. Uh, it's not that daunting. I was a little nervous about it before just because I wasn't sure how the process would go. I did use the jack, as you saw. I don't know how effective that really was because when I did this side, the jack itself was actually a little loose. I thought I had a lot of pressure on it and I didn't. Um, and it didn't seem to affect how the bearings went on or off. So I think the process that I did one at a time is pretty straightforward and you don't have to worry about too much. So if you were thinking about doing this or you weren't quite sure, hopefully this video helps. If you have any questions or comments, please drop them on down below and thanks for watching.